We're going to continue right where we left off in the last video, and you will remember we were getting a character out of our text here, and we were specifying the number one position, and that was, of course, this A. Now, what if you want to do a range of characters? What if we wanted to, for instance, specify the entire name here, the entire name of Mary? Well, we can do a range, and the way you specify a range is you use a colon, and then you specify the last position that you want. Now, in this case, of course, the last position is three, but there is a little caveat to this, and that is this actually will not give you the position three, which would be this Y. It would actually print out M-A-R. So just keep that in mind. You actually have to go one position farther for the last character that you want to show up. So in this case, we would actually have to put a four here to get Mary's entire name. So let's go ahead and execute this over here. And you know what? I forgot to put a zero here because we wanted the first position, the M. So let's go ahead and rerun this. And there we go. You can see we've got the full name, Mary. Okay, so let's take a look at another function here, and that is the len function. And what this will do is basically give you the number of characters in your string. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and specify the name of our variable. And let's go ahead and execute this. And we got an error. What did I do wrong? Oh, Okay, we need a parenthesis here. I made a classic mistake. We don't need brackets for this. So let's go ahead and fix that. And then let's go ahead and re-execute this. And there you can see it gave us the length of four. There's four characters in our string. And you know what? Let's go ahead and add a few more here. So Mary is out of the. And then let's go ahead and rerun this. And you can see now it counts 18 characters. So this is a very useful function. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the methods that you can specify. And if you took my Java series, and I hope you did, you will remember methods and functions. They're very similar. The only difference is here, and you're sort of dealing with semantics, but a method works directly against the object. So you have to use that period. Remember we talked about that in Java? You put a period after the object, and then you can start accessing methods to work against it. So the first method that we're going to specify is the find method. So remember, we have to specify our object, and then we have to put in the accessor, the period, and that will give us all of these methods that we can use. And the one we're going to use is this find. And you can see all the methods, by the way, that we can use here. There's a bunch of them, and we'll talk about these throughout the series. But the first one that we're going to talk about today is the find method. So let's go ahead and select that. Now, what this will do is allow us to look for a particular set of text within our string. So in this case, let's just go ahead and look for the name Mary. And let's go ahead and execute this. And you can see we got a return code of zero. Now, remember, this is just looking for this text. It's not going to print it out. All this method does, the find method, is just looking to see if this text exists within our string. And it did. So it will return a zero. Now, let's do a negative test. I always like to do negative testing. Let's put in a string of characters that are definitely not in this string. Let's go Z, 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 Z. Put a bunch of Zs in here. And then let's go ahead and execute that. And we got a minus one. So a minus one means this method did not find this set of text. And that's exactly what we expected. So just remember, when you're using the find method, you're either going to get a zero or a minus one. Those are the two values you're looking for. If it finds it, you get a zero. If it doesn't, you get a minus one. Now, there's also a method that Python supplies, which allows you to convert the text to either lower or upper case. And we specify the lower method to do that. We don't need any arguments here, so we can just get rid of all of this. And then we just go ahead and execute it. And you can see everything is lowercase. And then we can convert everything to uppercase as well. And you guessed it, it's just upper. Let's go ahead and rerun it. And now all of our text is in uppercase. Now, one very useful method that I'm going to show you today is the replace method. This is very, very useful, actually. And what we can do is replace some of the text in our string. So let's say we wanted to change the name here. We didn't want to use Mary anymore. We wanted to replace that. Well, you first specify the text that you want to replace. So we put in Mary, then you put in a comma, and then you go ahead and specify the new text that you want to insert. In this case, let's say we want to change the name to Mark. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute that. And there you can see our string now shows mark is out of the. Okay, that's going to do it for strings. We will be talking about other methods throughout the series, but this is a good start. In the next video, we're going to look at the other major data type in Python, numerics.